When did you decide on documentary filmmaking? So your, your first film is a narrative, mm -hmm. or did it sort of not really, there wasn't a decision, you, the, an interest sparked for something? So my thinking behind it was, so I did a second narrative called Eavesdrop, and then that had a very hard time getting out there too. So I was very discouraged because I was trying to figure out, well, how am I gonna tell the stories I wanna tell? And then you have this huge mountain to climb with raising money and the cast, and you have a very small amount of time to get it right with a feature, because it's only like a four or five week onset experience. And there's such long days, and I really was discouraged with the process of storytelling and the feature narrative. However, from those two directing gigs, I got noticed for some writing because I had written the scripts. So I came out here and I was doing some writing and I got a manager and I was working with an agency. And I started working with a couple of high profile directors on different scripts and I was helping to do a couple of things. But ultimately I got discouraged because with that, you sometimes are in turnaround on a lot of things, you don't get credited if you work on something. And you know, you're in that development and sometimes your work doesn't really pay off because you can be working on something for so long it never gets made. So then I had this frustration point where I was like, I just wanna tell my stories, like how can I do this a lot easier in a sense? Um, and I'm a New Yorker in my heart and I, as a child, used to come into the city and see the windows at Bergdorf Goodman and a variety of different storefronts. And I remembered that as a kid and I used to look up at these windows and say, wow, that's like my first approach and first encounter with storytelling and like a three act structure you could see within just one window. And I just absorbed that and then I said to myself, you know what, I'd love to do a film on Bergdorf's because that was my first encounter with this window or windows. I approached them and they said, we don't allow filming and to do a whole feature would be crazy because you'd have to buy the store out and film and it's multi, multi millions to even think about it. But then I said, well, let me look at your archive. Let me do a little more research on the place. And when they showed me their archive, it was so thin. And I was like, well, you know, you don't keep a formal archive. Like, you know, I'm surprised it's not huge. It's 100 years old. And they said, no. I said, well, let's do a project together. Let's, you know, I'll beef, I'll beef up your archive with interviews and, you know, we'll figure it out together. And I said, let's do a documentary. And they said, okay. So for the next two years, we were rolling camera and you know, you can green light your project like that without all the money you need, you know, to get it done. And also there's this protracted period where you can work on something for a longer period of time at your own pace and you don't have to have that really concentrated thing. And then at that moment, and it was in like 2011 when I started to think about that. And that's when docs started to really get hot and have like this golden period, which I still think we're going through. And I feel like storytelling in a doc form is a really refreshing approach if you really want to get your thing or film made and out there because you can literally, you know, for a thousand, two thousand bucks, have a camera start rolling and green light your own project. It's really about picking the right topic, getting the people in it that you want to interview or highlight and just make a compelling story. And if you stitch that all together successfully, you can get something out there in a theatrical way just as much as a feature narrative is these days. I mean, my last four docs all went to theaters. So I feel like, uh, and they were rated, and it's like, you know, you feel like you're doing it and in it, but it was a byproduct and a result of my frustration with the feature side. So I'm kind of like uh, in the doc world right now, and I've done about four, and I'm about to do two more that are already shot, but I'm entering back into the feature world now because I got attached to direct this film on Norman Rockwell. It's a biopic on that iconic artist. So I'm really excited about that. So I'm kind of like entering back in, but I feel better now because I've accomplished what I needed to in the doc world. And I feel like with that experience, I'll bring more to my directing prowess when I get on set and do that next thing.